Okay, so now in our next day of functions, uh, the chapter on functions, we're going to cover a uh, domain of rational and radical functions. So in this video, what I want to do is kind of uh, look at our warm up and then go over talking about domain and domain restrictions. And again, this is really going to be referring to the implied domain when we're just given an equation. So the first thing is, you know, let's just kind of look at these two uh, equations that I have here and let's evaluate them for some given points. And this is just a little warm up. So it's just going to be a kind of a little practice of plugging in numbers and evaluating them. So what I'm going to simply do here is if I have a function notation here, f of x equals the square root of x plus 2, just remember that, you know, f is the name of this function, x is the input variable, and then this is the rule. Now, if I change my input to negative 1, then I'm basically, all I'm going to need to do here is replace my x with a negative 1, okay? And then when I do that here, now I can evaluate this. And when I evaluate that, that's going to give me what we call the output of the function. So negative 1 plus 2 is going to be uh, 1. So I have square root of 1, which is equal to 1. Moving on to the next one, I have f of negative 2. So again, I'm just going to be re I'm going to use this notation. Negative 2 plus 2 is going to be 0. So therefore, I have the square root of 0, which is just 0. Uh, moving on to the next one, I have square root of 0 plus 2, which is just going to equal the square root of 2, which cannot be simplified, so I'll just leave it as that. Um, in this case, I have negative 4, so plug in a negative. Negative 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Um, I cannot take the square root of negative 2, at least using my real number system. So this is going to be uh, undefined under our real number system. You could simplify this you know, to i squared of 2. But for right now, we're, the i is an imaginary number. And, we're, and when we're talking about the domain, we're talking about real numbers. So we're going to use the understanding that is undefined. And then that last but not least, if I want to use 6, so I'll take the square root of 6 plus 2. And that is going to be the square root of 8, which I can break apart using multiplication as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. S square root of 4 times the square root of 2, our square root of 4 is going to equal 2 radical 2. So just a little review on simplifying radicals. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here I have a rational function. The name of the function is changed to g. Input and rule is a little bit different. So again, if I want to evaluate uh, for f of, oops, I messed those all up. Those are all supposed to be g's. Because it wouldn't make sense to plug in f of g. That means you'd have to plug in the f, um, you'd have to plug in negative 1 into the f function, where in this example, there is no function that's named f, right? So this is g, so I messed up. I didn't catch that. Um, so anyway, so if we're going to do g of negative 1, we're going to plug negative 1 into this function. So I'll do negative 1 plus 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is just going to be 1. So I have 1 over 1, which simplifies to 1. Then negative 2, so I could 1 over negative 2 plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is going to be 0. So I'm left with 1 over 0. We cannot divide by 0. Um, therefore, that's going to equal undefined. And again, just a quick little review of why can't you divide by 0. Well, let's just say 1 over 0 is going to equal some number x. Well, remember, the division property states that any division problem can be rewritten as a product. Well, 0 times x is obviously going to be 0. And obviously, 0 does not equal to 1. So that is a reason why dividing by 0 is undefined. Uh, if I just go ahead and plug in a 0, this one sometimes tricks up students because they think, oh, it can't be 0. Well, if I'm plugging in 0, though, the answer is still going to be uh, 0 plus 2 is going to be 2. So it's 1 over 2 is my value. Uh, negatives are perfectly fine. So I plug in a negative 4 plus 2, that equals 1 over negative 2, which now the negative, it's important here, just a little FYI, you can put the negative right in front. Or, I mean, even if you wanted to put it in the numerator, that's fine. Like, these are all equivalent to each other. Usually, we just stick with the middle one. Um, but just a little FYI, those are all exactly the same. And then, obviously, plugging in a 6 is really going to be no difference. The really only thing that is, you know, significant here is when we make the denominator equal to 0. I guess I just... Yeah, we're, we're good right there. Um, so then what I kind of look at is, well, let's kind of make sense of, you know, all this. Like, how does this undefined, you know, um, issue kind of look? So let's look at the first one, the radical here in a second, and kind of see how these points connect. Oops. Because I had to open it back up. 
All right, so here's kind of like the points, and you can see here, actually, I'm going to change that to six. All right, so if you look at these points, these are the points that we kind of, um, these are the points that I, that I decided to do, you know, negative two. Looks like that's a point on the graph. Zero, that's a point on the graph. Six, that's a point on the graph. If you remember, negative four was undefined. Why is negative four undefined? Well, look at the shape of the graph and look at where negative four is, right? Remember, negative four is what made the radical negative. You can see that negative four, the x value when x equals negative four is not in the domain. It's not even on this graph. So therefore, it is not in the domain of this function, okay? So that's why, um, that's why, you know, we were going to look, if I was just going to say the domain of this function, I'd say from negative 2 to infinity. So negative 4 is not included. That's why it made the function undefined. Let's go and take a look at the other one. All right, and if you remember our one value here that made it undefined was going to be um, the one that was negative 2. And you can see this graph is nice and continuous except for it has this break at negative 2. And negative 2 was the only value that when I, did, when I inserted in negative 2, it made the denominator 0. All the other values, oops, plug those in. All the other values are good. Negative 4 is a point. 0 is a point. 6 was a point. Um, all the other points are perfectly fine. Negative 4 or 6, yeah, 2. The only one that we had an issue with was negative 2. That is, again, going to be our discontinuity. So hopefully you can kind of see how the discontinuities um, affect or, you know, from algebraically look like it um, from graphically. So that kind of brings us again back to our uh, definition of domain, which we've already talked about, but we're going to be more talking about the implied domain with just looking at the equation, not always looking at the graphs. So the domain of the function, obviously, is just the set of all x values. Um, that are, it's really not just the set of all x values or the set of all input values or independent values, but it's really the set of all x values that are defined for the function. Meaning, if we were looking for the function, you know, when we first looked at functions, a lot of times it was easier just to list what is in the function. Like, you know, if you have a set of points, just list all the x values. It's fairly basic, right? But when we're dealing with a, like, continuous function here, um, let's go back to that graph real quick. If we're looking at a continuous function, it doesn't matter, like this one, the, it's true for all x values. Like, as I keep on zooming out, every single x value or real number here is covered in the domain. Like, this continues to infinity and negative infinity. So the only thing that's important is where it's undefined, and the function is undefined at x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is the only number that is not defined in the function. So when we're writing the domain, Sometimes it's easier just to say, or to kind of work backwards and look like what's not in the domain. In the same example here, when we look at this graph, it's only defined for values that are greater than negative 2. We don't even need to represent anything that's less than negative 2. So that's going to, understanding that kind of helps us when we're trying to write the domain of a function and not necessarily looking at the graph. So to finish this up, let's just kind of look at some of the restrictions of the domain that we're going to kind of come across. Obviously, you cannot divide by zero. So we want to find values that make the denominator equal to zero. And basically, what we're going to do is when you have an equation, you're going to set that equation equal to zero and solve. Solve for the value, typically x, that makes the equation true. And that is the value that is not in the, not in the domain or not, the function is not defined for those values because those, that value or values makes the denominator equal to zero. The next restriction is you cannot take the even root of a negative number. Um, so as we mentioned, we looked at that. When we looked at negative 4, it was not on the graph, right? It's undefined. So it doesn't need necessarily be a negative number. It's just any number that when we insert that number, plug it in, just like we did in our warm-up. Anytime we plug in that number and it makes the radical or what we call the radicand, the, the expression or the term under the radical symbol, uh, when that makes that number negative, those values are not in the domain. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, um, set our radicand greater than or equal to zero, meaning that everything under the radical symbol, the radicand, needs to be positive because when it's negative, it's undefined. And the last restriction is you cannot take the log, I should have said logarithm, you cannot take the logarithm, natural logarithm, or the logarithm uh, of a negative number. And we'll talk about that more once we get into logarithms. For this video, we're primarily just going to focus on rational and radical expressions. And then once we get into logarithms, we'll talk about that one. So on the last one, I just kind of focus in on, you know, what, again, we do for radicals. We set the inequality um, greater than or equal to zero. And for the equations, we basically want to set the equation equal to zero. Now, when we're doing the radical, when I set it greater than or equal to zero, 
I'm finding the values that are only in the domain. And when I set the rational function equal to zero, I'm looking for the values that are not in the domain. And if that sentence just made you very more confused, don't worry, I'm going to break down my examples for all of these uh, in my next couple videos. So just stay tuned for the next videos and you'll see me break down multiple examples for each one.